Hey, Eric Sider here, and in this video, I'm going to be going over two awesome resources to search for plants based on specific characteristics like nitrogen fixation, food fodder, insectary, growth type, habit, soil climate, all kinds of stuff. It's, it's really awesome. All right, let's get into it. We are going to begin with the USDA plant database. So plants.usda.gov. Okay, so you can do a basic search. So I will go with one of my favorites. Albizia julibrisens, the mimosa tree or silk tree. And you can search scientific common name symbol and family. I always recommend scientific name because there are always issues with common names applying to multiple plants. So there we go. And uh, the uh, first page will be some basic uh, inf info, hopefully some photographs distribution across America and uh, where it really gets interesting uh, at least now this isn't going to be available for everything but uh, a lot of times it will be is the characteristics so this is going to open up quite a bunch of options and so from all of this like uh, hello nitrogen fixation medium pretty good so it's got all this info on this tree. So that's great if you know what you're looking for. But if you want to look for a specific characteristic and find out which plants have that, that's where this tool really starts to shine. So under morphology and physiology, we're going to find some really good potential like nitrogen fixation. Yeah. So I'm going to select high. Now I will say the one thing I find annoying about this USDA plant search is you have to keep going back and forth to add multiple characteristics to your search. But anyway, let's go nitrogen fixation high, growth rate rapid. And let's see what we get. Acacias, very nice. We got some alders, some vetch, partridge pea, sun hemp, crotillaria, Russian olive. Eliangus, soybean, and uh, down we go. So let's do check out sun hemp. And again, it's uh, you know, to give you some basic info, usually some images. Now, like this, all it has is an image of the seed, so not necessarily that useful. And then you can go here if you want to check out some other characteristics. So let's see what else we got. So there's quite a bit on morphology and physiology. Color fire resistance, very helpful, particularly for the West Coast. Growth rate, height at base, height at maturity, allopathic, lifespan, okay, toxicity. How about growth requirements? Soil adaptation, tolerance of anaerobic qualities, drought tolerance, cold stratification required. So pH ranges, shade tolerance, temperatures. And we got bloom, so this is really handy if you want to start uh, searching for 
trees and varieties that fruit at different parts of the year. You want to get that diversity inbuilt into your systems. And then uh, suitability, you know, forage, human, commercial, all that good stuff, which might be handy if you have stuff on your site and you're trying to find you potential uses for it. So like I said, there is no shortage of application for all of this. So this one's really good. Obviously, it's very official and whatnot. So for what that's worth. Now, the other one is even cooler. So permacultureplantdata.com. And this was started by two permaculturists, Paula Westmoreland and Daniel Halsey. I don't know Paula, but I have worked with Daniel in the past. He's a really good designer and knowledgeable, and they've done a ton of work. Most of this has all been volunteer and user submitted. So, and it's a living resource. So it's constantly being added to and uh, anecdotal evidence hopefully is being confirmed. So, We'll get into the membership, which you need to you need to sign up for a membership. But there's free access, and then there's uh, two paid plans based on how much you need to get from this resource. So free is really good. You can still uh, get a bunch from that. You just uh, are limited in other things you can search for, and then uh, where the individual one comes into play is you get full search functionality and then the designer just adds this is really more useful for uh, if you're actually going to be doing professional designs and client work so you can download plant lists and uh, which might be useful depending on how big of a project you're using so A little bit on how to use. Obviously, there's tutorials you can go in deep, but uh, so you can look for plant lists, then you can look for specific plant characteristics and uh, different functions, how usable it is. There's even uh, there's even guild and polyculture aspects, which is really cool. So. Let's go for a search for plants. So this, what's great about this is you can add all these nitrogen fixer, all these characteristics, and then hit the search button, which is cool. So animal forage, yes. Nitrogen fixation, yes. Zone, I'll aim in nine. Plant type, perennial. Uh, how about drought tolerance? That's very good. And I have clay soils. Uh, all right, cool. Let's see what we got. Oh, growth rate fast. Boom. Now, the only thing I will say is, um, I would cross-reference any of these uh, plants just uh, since a lot of this is user submitted and not everything is 100% confirmed. So just to be on the safe side, if you're uh, unsure about any specific plant and specific characteristic, I would definitely cross-reference with some other resources potentially the USDA plant one. So a little one-two punch there. So let's check out Jerusalem artichoke. So perennial check, growth rate fast, soil type, sandy, loamy, salty clay, tuber, long rhizome, and then little, uh, a little bit more about the plant. 
drought tolerant, salt intolerant, so biomass, food, medicine, animal forage, validated. So here we go. Um, it'll give, this is really handy. So it'll give you whether the characteristics are validated and then who's doing the validation. So that's helpful. And I don't see the nitrogen fixation. So that's something uh, you might want to cross-reference if you're unsure. All right, so that's pretty awesome. Now, polycultures and regions list. So this is definitely a work in progress, obviously, because it takes a certain amount of years to prove any polyculture is actually working. So Apple Tree Guild, herbaceous support. So let's check out. What we got here zones three to nine hard usda hardiness zone three to nine soil type functions food mulch maker nitrogen fixer nutrient accumulator and pest repellent so we got alpine strawberry as a mulch maker compost container garden okay comfrey biomass compost definitely Insectary, daffodil, insecticide, insectary, yam, animal forage, erosion control, and the apple obviously is the star of the show. Another yam, wild indigo, nitrogen fixer, and another yam. So you could spend good amount of time just getting some really cool uh, let's see plant companionless this is another cool one so it's going to give you uh, companion plants for whatever you're looking for which is really really interesting all right so Oh, this is kind of cool. Indoor air cleaning polycultures. High humidity polyculture air cleaning. So for the home, very useful, particularly these days. Uh, polyculture design. So some more of the, actually how they're designed and laid out. Which is pretty cool. All right. So two really great resources that you want to know about. All right. Hope you enjoyed that little intro and overview on two really powerful tools to supercharge your plant lists, gardens, designs, whatever you may need them for. As always, the bomb permaculture shirts. The link will be below, and if you're in need of consultation and design, also check that below. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time.